Good evening. I'm Br Bradley Graham, a co-owner of Politics and Prose, along with my wife, Lissa. And on behalf of the entire staff, I'd like to welcome you here. Um, before turning to our guest authors, I'd, I'd just like to, to say a word about an important event coming up this April. It's being called World Book Night, and it's an ambitious attempt to hand out one million free books around the United States. You can read about uh, how this amazing effort is being organized and sign up to get involved yourself at us.worldbooknight.org. Uh, I'm mentioning this this evening because the deadline to, to sign up is tonight, so, there, so there's still time after this event. And now uh, a word about our guests this evening, Paula Broadwell uh, and Vernon Loeb, uh, and their new book, all in, the education of General David Petraeus. Petraeus, of course, has become the most prominent U.S. military general since World War II. And while he's already been a subject of several books, Paula was given unusual access to him and has brought his story up to date. As Paula writes early in the book, one of Petraeus's most important mentors, General Jack Galvin, once talked to Petraeus about the concept of what Galvin called the Big M, which stood for uh, individual mystique or mythology. The idea, as Galvin explained, is that troops need to be able to make their commanders bigger than they are, to magnify them. Patton had his pistols, Ridgway his grenades, Grant his cigars. Petraeus has stood out as the epitome of the soldier scholar. Intellectually, he's famous for being the lead author of the Army's revised doctrine on counterinsurgency warfare. On the battlefield, he's credited with turning things around in Iraq following President Bush's decision at the end of 2006 to surge U.S. forces there. And he faced a similar challenge in Afghanistan during a year of command there between the middle of 2010 and the middle of 2011. Petraeus's time in Afghanistan is the focus of Paula's book, although the book has a, a broader sweep. Paula incorporates lots of biographical information about Petraeus in an effort to examine what has made him so effective and influential a leader. In fact, the book grew out of Paula's pursuit of a PhD in public policy which involved a case study of Petraeus as an example of transformational leadership and organizational innovation. As a graduate of West Point and an Army Reserve officer, Paula knows the Army from the inside. In her book, she takes readers into briefing rooms and command posts onto training sites and battlefields. And she was granted a number of opportunities to travel with Petraeus and even to jog with him, which as anyone who has tried that um, knows that it probably deserves a medal in, an, in itself. Petraeus is notorious for the intensity with which he works out. And it's the same intensity he applies to just about everything he does. I might add that Paula herself is no athletic slacker. She's a runner and ranked number one in overall fitness in her class at West Point. Uh, I also would like to note that Paula is donating 20% of the proceeds of the book to um, Team Red, White, and Blue, an organization that works with wounded veterans using physical fitness to help them find their new normal. Paula was helped in the writing of her book by a very talented former colleague of mine at the Washington Post, Vernon Loeb. Vernon, who has lots of experience himself covering the military and intelligence world, is now the Post Metropolitan Editor. Paula plans to speak for about 20 or 30 minutes, and then she'll take questions. If you have a question, uh, please remember to step up and, um, and use the microphone right here in the center of the room. Um, afterwards, Paula will be happy to stay and, and sign books. So please silence your cell phones and join me in welcoming Paula Broadwell.
before we get started, I'd, I'd like to see how many veterans we have in the room. So um, I know who's who I'm facing. Okay, great. Well, first of all, thank you for all of your service. And I know we might have a few folks that belong to Team Red, White, and Blue as well. Are there any folks from um, from this veteran support organization? A couple of folks. Okay, great. Thanks for coming. Um, I it's. Um, very important to me to take advantage of the national media platform that I have right now with the book. It just became a bestseller this week, which is pretty exciting. Uh, New York Times bestseller, number six on the nonfiction list and number 13 overall. And for somebody who doesn't really like to write that much, it's, um, it's very humbling. But I have to give credit to my, my writing partner for helping us uh, to get to this point. Um, but I felt that it was important to do something consequential with uh, the attention that the media is, is bringing to the book and want to um, call Americans to go all in as well to support our wounded warriors as they come back from these theaters. We, we owe it to them, and I think it's our turn. So I'd like to tell you a little bit about um, how I came to write the book, and then we'll bring out some characters that are actually in the book. They're in the room, and we'll talk a little bit about their adventures. And then I'd like to share some stories about General David Petraeus and his development. Can everybody hear okay in the back? All right. In 2006, General David Petraeus was um, the commander at Fort Leavenworth, the Army's schoolhouse, and he was helping to write the counterinsurgency field manual. I should say he was overseeing the writing of it. In fact, he edited 30 times the first chapter, so he likes to pay attention to detail. But he came to Harvard University, where I was a graduate student, and wanted to speak to students about the merits of counterinsurgency um, uh, approach to fighting the Iraq War, which we were losing at the time. And he invited a group of veterans, of young students, um, soldier scholars, if you will, to meet with him after his presentation to the larger student body. And I went up to him and, and said, I'm writing my thesis on negotiating with terrorists, and I think it could help your team win, and you should really read it. And he was kind enough to um, indulge me and take the paper and, and give me his, his business card, as he does with a lot of young soldier scholars. He's very open-minded about taking ideas from anyone and everyone, and in fact uses what he calls and what is has long been known as directed telescoping to reach out to those in different sectors and fields to gather ideas. So we kept in touch via email for a couple of years and I was still a graduate student. Two years later I reached out to him and asked if he would speak to a group of students at Harvard um, who, were, who were trying to find ways to galvanize greater cooperation amongst the intelligence community, the military, and, and other national security organizations that we as, as mid-grade field officers, if you will, were frustrated seeing the lack of cooperation. So he agreed to do a video teleconference from Baghdad, and this was just after the surge had started to achieve some success in Iraq. And he opened his presentation with a quote from a Roman philosopher, Seneca, luck is what happens when preparation meets opportunity. And I feel like that has been uh, exemplary of his life, and in, in my instance with this book, um, it really captures the feeling of how I got this opportunity to write the book. And I'll go into that a little bit more in, in a bit. So fast forward again. He, he went, um, the, he, the surge was, as we all know, um, instrumental. And Doug may argue a little bit otherwise. But the surge complemented, I think, the Iraqis' frustration with the uh, insurgency in Iraq. And basically, the tide, tide was turned there. And we were able to start to draw our forces down. And Petraeus came back um, to CENTCOM in 2008, and I was intrigued by how this individual had galvanized organizational transformation in, in the Army, had shaped this new doctrine, which was kind of old doctrine repackaged, but brought this new doctrine, um, shaped the organization of our units that were going to war, shaped the training and equipping of those forces, and so forth. And I was looking at this from a management perspective. How does an insider affect transformational organizational transformation? And I asked him if I could use him as a case study um, in my doctoral dissertation, and, and he agreed. And so I began to um, interview him via email for approximately a year and a half. And then we had a chance to go for a run, and I, and I, I asked if I could interview him on the run. And I brought a tape recorder, and this, was, this is a test. It's in the, the preface of the book, but basically shows, I think, well, I think why I gained rapport with him. Um, <laughs> I could keep up with him on a run, and we ended up getting down to about a six-minute mile pace. Needless to say, I didn't transcribe that interview. It didn't really turn out. It was a bunch of heavy breathing. Um, 
So we continued that sort of um, email correspondence, and, and I was writing and, and, uh, and incorporating his thoughts. And I was able to take advantage of my tribe, if you will, the military and my classmates at West Point, four of whom were his aides um, throughout his career. And several of them had, several other aides had been.